prize in indoor lacrosse, the North American Cup. In 1987, a new sport soared like an eagle and featured a story of worst to first for a team called the Thunder. 1988, the Big Apple struck Goldberg as Jeff scored four in a heavenly performance for the Saints. For two years, the city of brotherly love owned the Cup. In 1989, Chris Dent sent Philly fans into a frenzy in an 11-9 victory for title number one. One year later in New England, the Wings soared over the Blazers for title number two behind a hat trick by Brad Cox. The tail of the Turbos marked the turning point as the twin brothers' gate changed the face of lacrosse and brought Detroit a title in 1991. When the league expanded in 92, little did anyone know that the new kids on the block would capture the cup in an overtime thriller. Tonight, Chapter 7, the Chronicle of the Cup. Prime Network presents the Major Indoor Lacrosse League World Championship Game. The Bandits and the Wings met one year ago in the Spectrum. In the fourth quarter, 7.07 to go, Jim Feltman gives the Bandits the lead for the first time, 10-9. Three minutes later, a rocket shot by Chris Flynn ties the game at 10 and sends it into overtime. The cup awaited the winner. And John Tavares behind the back wonder shot gave the Bandits a championship. Zoom forward to 1993. The same two teams meet in a battle of undefeated. John Tavares scores his fourth goal to give Buffalo a two-goal lead. Rob Sheck makes it a one-goal game and gave the Wings a chance. But that chance was taken away by the razzle-dazzle of Kevin Alexander. Buffalo continues to an undefeated season. Tonight, a rematch for the World Championship. Hello, everyone. John Horton along with Lee Felsmo, and this is the one we've been waiting for. A rematch for the World Championship, quite simply, the Bandits and the Wings. If it was a boxing match, it would be the thriller in the middle. This is the best against the best. Best offensive package in the league is here tonight on the field. Each team doing a sensational job this year. Let's take a look at how these teams got to this championship game. Philadelphia ended up winning the American division. And with that win, they got a bye in the first round. New York beats Baltimore. Meets Philadelphia last week, and Philadelphia just made a mockery of their great defense. It was 10-1 to 1 before that game got a little bit closer, but they won very easily. The National League, Buffalo dominates again. They're undefeated. The Buffalo squad has won 17 straight games. They get the bye early on. Boston beats Detroit, and Buffalo takes on Boston. A very, very difficult game for them, John, but they did a good job of sticking with the game. Didn't have the lead to the fourth quarter. They win that game, and they come into the big one. If you put together a roster of all the superstars in the Major Indoor Lacrosse League, a lot of them will be on the field tonight. We've actually broken it down to three players on each team that you're going to want to look for. Well, really, this is the focus for each offense. Now, let's take a look at the wings first. The big three on this team are comprised of Paul and Gary Gate, identical twins, and Rob Sheck. These three guys comprise 50% approximately of the offense on the entire team. The last time they met, seven goals from this triad of players, 65 goals between them for the season. Watch these three players because this is the focus for the offense. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, you've got the Buffalo team. You can th show three players on their squad that also comprise the big three. Now, let's take a look at how similar the numbers are. Keenan, Alexander, and Tavares. Seven goals also in the last time they met. 70 goals for the season, also about 50% of the team offense. The big three for each team, and they'll get a lot of attention from the defenses of the other team. When teams go into a championship game, they want to be pumped up. They want to be at at least 110%. But two players will have a, a tough time being at even 100%. Bill Burroughs has been a player in the Major Indoor Lacrosse League. He's been a general manager. And tonight, he brings us closer to the action and brings us more on the injury story. Bill? Thanks, John. Injuries certainly are going to play a big part of this evening's game. I had a chance to ask John Tavares of the Buffalo Bandits and Dallas Elliott, two of the key players for both teams, 
just how those injuries are going to affect them in this evening's event. Well, probably it's going to slow me down offensively. Um, I'm not sure how, how much I'll be playing tonight. I think I'll be determined in the first quarter. And uh, hopefully I'll give a lot of effort and I'll be playing a lot of adrenaline tonight. So hopefully, hopefully I'll still be able to put some balls in the net for, for the team. Last game, it was a, last game I missed it. It was a pretty close game, and I think uh, I can help the team offensively, even though I'm about 80%. Uh, it's, a, it's a little stiff, but uh, the mobility is there. I don't think it should affect me at all once I get into the heat of the game. Well, you mentioned earlier you had some other bruises. What, uh, what, what are you hiding tonight? A couple of weeks ago, I, I took a shot in the hand at practice, and uh, at first we thought my hand was broken, but it was just a couple of bruised tendons, and right now I'm getting over the tail end of uh, a flu. So other than that, I'm, I'm perfectly all right. John Leaf. I'll tell you, with the excitement of 16,000-plus fans here tonight, those injuries are probably the furthest thing from their mind, but we'll keep track of them as the game progresses. Thanks, Bill. That'll be a story that we'll keep our eye on throughout the game, but something really almost more important is the matchup between Buffalo and the Gates. If there's one team that gives the Gates a lot of trouble, it's the Buffalo Bandits. Well, this is true, and I'll tell you what. If you look at the success of Buffalo, it really parallels their success in defensing Gary and Paul Gates. Let's take a look at the five times they've gone against the Gates. Buffalo now two years in the league. The first two games against the Gate brothers, 22 goals. They ran roughshod over Buffalo. Buffalo was 0-3 in those early games. Then, the last three times they've played the Gates, twice with Detroit, once with Philadelphia, they've only gotten 13 goals. They have a new system in those last three games. They've put specific players to really fend off the Gates, keep them out of the offensive circle. They've done a great job, maybe better than anybody in the league. Gary Gate knows that full well. Let's find out what he thinks about the tough defense from Buffalo. Well, there's no question they're going to put a lot of pressure on Paul and I tonight, but I think that's where uh, we're going to have to go to the other players on the team, and if we're really going to win tonight, it's going to be a team effort. Uh, there's no doubt that um, you know they're going to come after us, try and get us down, knock us down every chance they get. We're just going to have to keep getting back up and going hard to the net and dishing the ball when other people are open. Obviously, keeping pressure on the gates is going to be one of the keys to the game, but let's take a look at the keys to the game for both teams, Lee. Well, I've isolated things that aren't obvious. Uh, we know they have to focus on the gate brothers, but these are things I think the wings can do to really guarantee a success. They've got to shut off Kevin Alexander. Kevin Alexander is a world team player that makes big goals, scores big goals at big moments. Tonight's a big moment. More assists. Last time they played against Buffalo, they didn't have more assists than goals. That means they weren't moving the ball that much. They need more assists than goals tonight, and they have to stop the fast break goals that were so prevalent the first time they met the Buffalo Bandits. For the Buffalo squad, they also have to stop fast breaks, number three, but the first thing they can do is hold the big three to less than seven goals. Hold the seven, they have a chance to win this game, and they have to win 50% of their faceoffs. Last game, John, they only won five of 30 faceoffs. They were horrible, and that takes away possession. They need to be at least 50-50 in possession on the faceoffs. 16,325. Join us. You join us when we come back for all the free game festivities and the opening faceoff on Prime Network. The 1993 Major Indoor Lacrosse League World Championship is brought to you by Coors Light. It's the right beer now. By Adidas, the official footwear of Major Indoor Lacrosse. By STX, play your best with STX. And by Brian, the power behind the game. It's a silver time. time. It's a silver play. It's a silver setting. At a silver face. Bring it on. A very best friend. So silver bullet. They're always working on something new. That's why everyone who's serious about lacrosse plays with Sticks equipment. My mother uses a stick. With Sticks, you'll score more gold. Probably a thousand, hundred thousand, million. The people at Sticks know the sport. They're lacrosse players. Lacrosse players. I think my brother Paul works at Sticks. Every goal we scored was Sticks, Sticks. Sure do. Can't say any more about it. And now from the Auden Buffalo, our national anthem. 
before the major indoor lacrosse league 1993 world championship game. Lacrosse, the power behind the game. My Uncle Ernie loves the Phillies, but he's such a lousy driver, he can never make it to the vet to see him play. He even got his insurance canceled trying. So to get Uncle Ernie off the road and into Veterans Stadium, we got him Prism. Cruck, Dykstra, Dalton, the Phillies are gearing up for an exciting season, and Prism has 45 games from Veterans Stadium. To order Prism, dial 1-800-CABLE-ME. Call now and get installation for only $4.95 or a free upgrade. I can't believe Uncle Ernie makes his living as a driving instructor. really was history. The Thunder win, win, they win that game 11 to 10. They came into that playoff in the last place. They were in last place in a four-team league, and they win it all. Let's take a look at the series record between these two teams. Of course, Buffalo leads 3-0. They've never lost since January of last year. Well, this year's a different year. They've only played once with Philadelphia retooled with the Gate Brothers. We look at Dallas Elliott starting in the goal, 5'10", 180. He's taken a beating in the last few weeks, but this team is tough with the Gates. It was a one-goal game the last time they played. Ross Cowie, he'll start in the net. This is the guy that Les Bartley wants to go with the whole way. Cowie has been sensational, and he'll be less reluctant to go to his backup. Philadelphia, because of the injuries, may go to Metke sometime in this game. Scott Gabrielson against Darius Cooper in the opening faceoff of the 1993 championship. Gary Gate off the opening faceoff gets the offense running for the wings. And Gary Gate may be a focal point. He is really coming on strong. Much better shape than he was last year. He wants to make an impression. He's a sensational player. Dr. Hoover, Jim Beltman going after it, but Gabrielson picks it up to Gary Gate, who fires it safe. Gary Gate off the rebound, loses control. Darius Kilgore going after it. Ball loose along the boards, and they're hitting early at the odds. Gary Gate still wants another shot. Paul Gate in front, deflected wide by Cowie. 
over the top by Matusha. And you can thank Jim Belton. Belton comes in behind and makes the big last check to take the shot away from this man. Watch Gary give it to Paul. Belton comes from behind and checks the ball at the last moment. Credit Belton with that save. Wings still on the attack. Accordingly, wrapping up Rob Check. A penalty will be called. Gabrielson up top. The Wings have pulled their goalie. And as soon as possession goes like it does right there, two minutes will be called against the point accordingly for holding Rob Check. Both of these teams have firepower in their power play. Neither team wants to get into a man-down situation very much. But thinking back to the last time they played, John, the first three goals of the game were scored by the team that was a man short, not a man up. So watch out for the explosion of the man down team here led by Derek Keenan of Buffalo. They've got to make that first big save first. This is a firepower, power, uh, man up play, rather. The Gate Brothers joined by Spinner and Denikan and Rob Sheck. Sheck with the ball back behind Denikan. Here's Gate with a shot to the back of the net. And the first tally of the 1993 championship goes to the Philadelphia Wings. Denikin makes a real smart move. He got the ball deep in the corner. The defense was a little bit unsettled. Paul Gates started that with a very errant pass. Then the ball came back to Denikin. The defense was unsettled because look at Paul all open. And when he gets the ball, he doesn't waste any time taking a hard shot. As he takes this shot, Ross Cowie is moving from his right to his left. He wasn't quite set. Right in the old five hole between the legs. First blood by Philadelphia. Some discussion about the goal. Apparently, the stick of Paul Gate is going to be inspected by the fourth official to see if it's a legal stick. A stick check has been requested. A stick check has been requested. The officials are looking at it. You might want to. Well, I've looked at, I looked at that exact stick before the game. Uh, John, and I can tell you right now, it's, 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 it's Paul really takes it to the limit. Paul and Gary take such a tremendous beating as players. They have all the tools. They're strong, 6'2", 210. They've got the great beating ability, the great shooting ability. So they, But they make their sticks very, very tight in the pocket because they take such a pounding from the other defenses. They need to make the pocket tight. I don't know if this stick is going to pass the inspection as we get into it. I think for the first time, we've seen a stick thrown out of the game. And the goal comes off the board. like a police officer catching you with a radar gun and you thought you'd gotten away with it but just when you thought you'd gotten away with it writes up the ticket the goal comes off the board we're back to zero zero well i tell you what i hope paul doesn't think i didn't even do that because I, I had to look at his stick early before the game and paul says to me he says look mine's not the only one like this all these players who get a lot of attention from the defense have to make that pocket very tight Paul Gate gets beaten up by a lot of defensive players, and he takes it to the limit. He doesn't get away with it right here. The goal gets wiped out, and there's a four-on-four -four penalty situation upcoming as Paul Gate gets a new stick. And now the ramification is, John, he'll have to play with a different stick, and, of course, he's not going to like that. That's the downside for Paul, but it might fire up the Gate brothers to go a little bit harder. And I wonder if Gary is going to have to take a look at his stick before it gets right down. Need stick. Right down with Dave Evans, who is coaching his last game in the major indoor lacrosse league, and I don't think no, that this it. was one he was thinking about. Part of the inspiration for the Philadelphia Wings going into their third national or world championship is sending Dave Evans off for the world championship again. He's has two rings already. He's been in four championships. He's one of the best football in the history books as one of the best in the MILL. So here's the situation. Paul Gates will now, get a two-minute penalty for having an illegal stick. Now he had to test that stick out again. He, look at that stick. It's much different than his other one. Bill Barroza down below. What did you pick up? You're on the bench. I had a chance to listen in on the conversation with the, between the official and the coach, Dave Evans of Philadelphia, and they were arguing the point that the ball would not come out of the stick of the Gate Brothers. So they disallowed the goal and we're 0-0. 
Oh, now Buffalo with an opportunity. Derek Keenan in front. Dallas Elliott with the save. Derek Keenan has tremendous pressure on him today. Watch Derek Keenan. Not only is he counting on the scores, goals at big numbers, he has to defend the gate runner. He plays man down and man up. Dr. Hoover, Jim Dalton picks it up. Keenan has it across the restraining line. Dumps it inside for Kilgore, his shot hits the pipe and comes out. Crease Going in for in the crease. Right, crease violation. He got in a little too close to Elliott. Elliott looks okay. He had that big injury to his shoulder in the playoff game against New York. He looked strong. Johnny also had the flu just this last Wednesday, but he looks like he's ready to go. Is this place Rocket Leaf? They wow. are standing room only in Buffalo, and I'll tell you what, they love the bandits. Here's Gary Gay, very close to the net. Tried the one-timer with John McAvoy. Beltman picks it up, hits a breakaway, Rich Kilgore! John, number three on the keys to the game is stop the fast break. They get one here on Beltman's steal. Kilgore comes in, makes the big fake, and puts it behind Elliott. Beltman right there makes the sensational steal, gives up to Kilgore. Kilgore checks the defense. He knows he's all alone. Makes the big commitment to Dallas Elliott, and then just jockeys in behind him. Tremendous move. Chris Flynn tries to tie it up very quickly. Unable to get it past Ross Cowley, who is the man for the Bandits in the Nets. Pushing the violation, uh, the go ball will go back to the wings. Still a four-on-four four situation for the next four seconds. Fenneran with a shot blocked away, pulled in by Alexander. Here's Bob Henry. Hit the pipe. Rocks it off the pipe. Great defense by Alexander, who is really not a defensive player. He's got too much mileage on those knees, and Bartley will try to get him off, and he just hit that ball out of the air cleanly. Both teams back at full strength. Tavares with a shot from the outside. Delay penalty will be called. Paul Gate doesn't know about it. But the first time that a Wings player gets possession, the whistle will blow as it does right there. And they're going at it down by the goal. The Gate brothers are really in the thick of it. They're getting a lot of attention defensively, and they're not going to put up with it. Gary Gate got the call on the other end. Paul Gate fighting on this end. Here's John Tavares. He has a severe hamstring injury. I say severe. It's right on the edge, John, of him not being able to play. He goes into the bench for a fight against Paul, I guess. But Gary Gate got the flag on the other end from a fight with Troy Cordingly. Cordingly giving him a lot of defensive heat. And Gary just turned around and said, look, I'm going to establish myself early on. You guys can't mug me too early. John Tavares, the only penalty as we look in the box. Yeah, and he is the best offensive player numbers-wise in the MILL. Tremendous year he's had. And Gary Gates penalty also now on the board, so we will go four on four once again. Unusual, I'll tell you right now as we look at Gary, Gary and Paul are really trying to establish something in an emotional level. You don't see them take very many minutes in the box throughout the year. John, you, you and I both haven't seen them spend too much time in there, but tonight they have to set that tempo early and let the referees know that they're not going to take a lot of physical tackling, physical pushing. 11.30 to go, first quarter, one nothing Bandits. On a goal by Rich Kilgore, but there has been a goal taken off the board. The first goal of the game by Paul Gates using an illegal stick. That's been the story so far. The Bandits on the run now. This is Darius Kilgore. Kilgore is one of those players that has to step up a notch to fill the void left by John Tavares. Tavares not 100%. And those players are all wrapped up. A lot of fighting early on. Wow. The scuffle settles on one end, the wings on the offense on the other. McAvoy up top to the point to Finneran. Finneran a dangerous player. Tried the centering pass to McAvoy who mishandles it. So far the fast break has been a great offensive tool for Buffalo and again that's one of the keys for both teams. Take away the fast break and Buffalo can finish with the best of them. Ross Kelly with a save on Mark Hahn shot on the counterattack. This is Derek Keenan. Almost a 30-second violation called against the Wings on that last possession. 
Keenan is the offensive force right now with the Hurts of Arts. Stu Aird with a bouncing shot over the glass into the net, and the Wings will get possession. 10-20 to go, first quarter, and four Ladies hits in front. Setting up the game, John, we haven't talked about it too much, but what's odd is if there was a Vegas Stop spread in this game, Philadelphia would be favored probably by two goals for a number of factors. This team is on the rise. This team is really doing well, and I think the overall tendency is to think Philadelphia is ready to win it. Buffalo knows that. They're coming out fired up. Fight for the ball between Veltman and Finneran. The hold is called, and let's see who gets it. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with more on Prime. Allman Sports International, more than sticks and gloves. For a free catalog, call 1-800-BEST-STICK. We welcome you back to the Odd in Buffalo. There you take a look at Dallas Elliott, a man who has fought the flu, fought a severe shoulder injury just to be in this game. And, and right next to him, Dwight Metke with the glasses on. He is a very capable backup goalie. 16,325, the largest crowd for a championship game in major indoor lacrosse league history. The sixth straight sellout here in Buffalo. And just to remind you, these team, two teams went at it last year in Philadelphia. Ironically, only one home team has won any Mill World Championship. That was Philadelphia a few years ago. But the away team seems to have good a good record in the MILL. And in case you're wondering, three busloads up from Philadelphia to come to this game. Shot off the pipe, taken by John Conley. Off the rebound, this is Chris Hines. Hahn, unable to get the ball, reeled in by Cowie, who has a little trouble reeling that fish in. So far, the defense for Buffalo has been sensational, almost on the verge of being bug-like, but they're really tying up Philadelphia in the cylinder. Bob Hamley inside to the back of the net. John Bob Hamley was one of the guys that really deserved to be in the big three picture. He really has more points than Kevin Alexander, but Kevin Alexander is a big gamer in, in many ways. But look at Hamley with 14 goals on the season coming in here and just beats two players to put in the second goal for Buffalo. And the Bandits win the faceoff up 2-0 with 8.15 to go in the first quarter. That's right, first quarter. Keenan with a shot, Elliott stays strong. Accordingly, the rookie goes after it. Paul is still loose in the corner. Accordingly, against Tony Rush. And that's pulled in by Elliott. Well, that's the defensive line. Tony Rush, tremendous defensive player. Now they're down to Gary Gate. Watch the big three work together. Gate, Gate, and Shep. Paul Gate fires the shot, saying, Cowie, as they like to say here in Buffalo. Accordingly, it picks up the loose ball. John, one thing that happened last game here in Buffalo this season was they shut down the gates pretty well, but Shep got four goals. That put new focus on him. Les Bartley has specific defense assignments to try to shut down Robbie Shep. This is Stu Air getting the ball with this restraining line. Kevin Alexander working against Brian Volker. Ball is loose just outside the crease. Tavares going after it. Loose ball first. And possession will go to the wings. I think the fans here at the odd sense that the bandits might have gotten them. Called by Bill Fox. The referees here were chosen for their excellence throughout the year. Rich Tamburino, Tom Young, Bill Fox doing the championship game. A credit to their good year doing what they do best. Referees. Here's Kevin Finneran. To Billy Miller. Taken down right in front. That's going to be a penalty for holding called against Kevin Alexander. And Alexander will get two minutes in the sim bin. 
I'll tell you, a lot of physical play here. Look at Alexander. He doesn't want to be in this position again. Most of all, mostly offensive areas is where you want to see Alexander at this stage of his career. Trump man just play one of the best ever out of Canada. He's in the Hall of Fame already up there in Canada. And Kevin got wrapped up. Doesn't have the great mobility with these knees that have been around the league once or twice. So he wanted to wrap up his player, not give him the shot, counting his man down team. Gary Gate, Paul Gate, Rob Sheck, Paul Denikin. Kevin Finneran, the only one that hasn't touched the ball in this possession. Paul Gate behind the back. Sheck tries Cowie. It won't go. Gate, one touch. Denikin. Cowie stays wrong. Tremendous play by Cowie. Tavares in front. Hit the pipe. What a pass and by Tavares, Derek Keenan. And Tavares put his hands up. He thought it was in. He got it just on the pipe, oh, half an inch to the right, and that's a shot, another fast break goal, but not in. Power play, counterattack, Kelly deflects it wide. Hiltman picks up the loose ball. Over the year, he had over 102 loose ball pickups. Well, John, last time these two teams played, Beltman had more ground balls than any two players on the field. Look at Stu Air go until he's played off the ball right in front, but he was going four on one. Derek Keenan is big and strong with the ball. Against Finneran, the stick check takes the ball away. We're going to take a break, and we will be back with more 2 nothing Bandits. When traveling, stay with the teams of a major indoor lacrosse league stay. In Baltimore, the Sheraton Inner Harbor. In Boston, the 57 Park Plaza Hotel. In Buffalo, the Buffalo Hilton. In Detroit, the Omni International. In New York, the Long Island Marriott. In Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Airport Marriott. Stay at the best, the official hotels of the major indoor lacrosse league. Two nothing, the Bandits with the lead here in the first quarter. And look at the action on the offensive end of the field. This is a great move to get inside by Buffalo. And the hit by Volker, defensive specialist, was an All-American in Johns Hopkins. Volker really lays him out. I'm seeing more hitting in this game, John, than I have ever seen in the seven years of the mill. They, both teams are trying to really establish themselves physically. 54 seconds remaining on the penalty to Kevin Alexander for holding. The Bandits shorthanded with a new 30-second clock. I'm going to try to go ahead and just get out of this thing, get the game back to an even situation. Accordingly in front, deflected wide by Alec. That will be an increased violation. Well, that is not a smart play. Accordingly, his first year in this league, he's an experienced player. But you really want to take time off the clock. Now they're back to a man down. Really not a smart play by Accordingly. He's putting his defense in a bad position for 26 seconds. 20 on the shot clock, 30 on the penalty clock, and the one touch by Paul Denikin gives the Philadelphia Wings their first goal of the game. And take that back to Cordingley's mistake. He goes in there. He didn't have any business shooting that shot with 20-some seconds left in the shot clock. He gives the ball back to the power play, and they wasted no time. Watch it start with Paul Gate. He looks over to the wing. Then it goes down from Gary to Denikin, and the redirect shot. Watch the redirection happen to Cowie, who was way out looking for the shot. Easy bucket there, a slam dunk kind of bucket. Cowie has a tendency, John, we've talked about it before, if you've seen our prime games, of coming out high in the crease area if he thinks you're going to shoot, and Philadelphia took advantage of it right there. Off the face off, the wings with possession. It's a 2-1 game here at the Odd in Buffalo. 4.38 to go in the first quarter. John Conley working against Bob Hamlin. Conley looking for the centering pass. Takes it up the point, no scrap. Maybe looking for the low shot. There's Hahn with five on the shot clock. He's double teamed. Loose ball. Hamley tries to get it. He finally picks it up in midfield. Hamley's had a great year again. 14 goals and a handful of assists. He's fourth on the team score. Glenn Lay with a shot going wide. This defense fears Glenn Lay, John, because of his size. He's a huge player, number five. Comes in there and really it takes a lot to stop Glenn Lay's forward motion. We're going to take a break. Back with more in a moment. Baseball. Phillies baseball. Dykstra. Dalton. Hollins. Cruck. The home team. The home field. Comedy. Fatal passion. Material girls. True love. 
paths to freedom. The best movie of the year. Home Team Sports. Great movies. Prism. One channel. One month. One call. Make it now. Goal, trying to play defense. Thurston trying to help out. Now, good play by Cook. Gets it to the far side. And here goes the fast break. Georges comes up right in front of the goal with a shot and a score right over Beardmore's shoulder. That's Goldberg again. We talked about how hard his shot was earlier. He Jeff Goldberg sparking his team to a 17-16 win. Mark Gold of the Wave had a record five goals, but it wasn't enough. And who who was that guy doing play-by-play, -play, by the way? Well, and that was with uh, that was me with uh, Steve Stederson. Steve Stederson, now the executive director of the Lacrosse Foundation. The Wings with the ball down by one. John Nostrand working against Mark Burnham. This is Rob Hoynes. Over to John Conley against Randy Morins. Conley's shot. Conley has to backtrack, but still brings it in. And Conley was being defended by John Tavares. I'm watching him. He looks like he's running pretty smoothly, John. Tavares going after the ball with Conley. That'll be a loose ball. Hold. Possession will go back to the wings with 3.25 to go. So Tavares with that injury. Here he is, the leading scorer in the league. He says he's at 80%. He almost scored on a fast break, and he played pretty tough defense that last time down. Gary Gate in front, to the back of the net, and we're tied at two. Nobody does it better than Gary and Paul Gate. They bring a package of physical ability that no other player in the league has, in my estimation. Look how big and strong they are. They can have great accuracy with their shots, just like that, after they beat one or two players. But they also can feed so uh, tremendously. Look, they beat two players. Gary comes in, gets right in front of the goal. He has a full 18 square feet to shoot at. One more time. Beats one player, two players, and then takes the shot over Cowie's shoulder. Gary Gate with a goal, his fifth goal of the playoffs. As we're into the final three minutes of quarter number one. Time is two. That's a story in itself. He had four goals, four assists. Gary Gate did in the game against New York. He has really come on strong here in the late stages of the 93 season. Wings on the attack. Rob Sheck at the point. Thought about the shot. Decided to give it off to Paul. Paul Gate. Moving in, looking for the shot, being double team, triple team as the stick check by Keenan knocks the ball away. Well, this is the defensive unit they want against that gate line, the gate gate check line. This is the line they want Selfman, they want Keenan, and they want Kilgore to match up against those big strong players that with all that talent. The goal was scored against another line of Buffalo. Derek Keenan, centering pass, accordingly looking for the shot against Scott Gabrielson. Accordingly, circling around the crease. Circles, circles, and can't get the shot. The stick check by Gabrielson takes it away. But Courtney says, look what I found. Got it to Dennis Kilgore. He couldn't quite control it. Courtney had the shot. He held it too long. He had a shot for about two strides before he got the ball checked out. 30-second violation. The ball will go back to the wings. Under two minutes to go. First quarter. Accordingly, showing a little bit of inexperience. He's a tremendous player for the Canadian leagues, an offensive threat up there, but he's still learning the ins and outs of the major indoor lacrosse leagues. There's Bill Miller behind the crease. Taken down right in front by Bill Mahar, and that will be a penalty that will send Mahar into the penalty box. Well, I don't know, you know, they don't want Miller to get in front to take a one-on-one -on -one shot against Cowie, so. And against most teams, this is not a bad play because then you have a great man down unit. But against Philadelphia, this man up unit is so powerful. Check, gate, gate. You've got Denikin down low and Finneran. It's just absolutely incredible to think they'll have that much success stopping this power play from Philadelphia. You've got four great goal scorers out there and one heck of an assist man in Kevin Finneran. Well, Denikin tried the one touch there. They have a goal already, they have one called pass. Look at this, Kevin Alexander, Russell, there it goes! Not to put a damper on things, but do you think that Kevin Alexander may have the next stick to be checked? 
that's it. Let's just talk about his finishing ability. I talked to the keys about stopping the fast break, which they haven't done against Buffalo, and then stopping Kevin Alexander. He's a finisher. He won't create an offense. He'll finish it better than anybody in the league, and that's what he did right there. You don't want Alexander with the ball one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. Alexander, a great player, but last year, I remember you did a feature on some of the sticks in the league, and his was one of those real narrow sticks. Definitely one that could be looked at. Again, the great players all push the limits of the rules because they get so much attention from the defenses. Gary Gate with a shot. Cowie saw it go between his legs, but it went wide. Kevin Alexander is tremendous as he is. Again, will not create a lot of offense. He's got to keep the ball out of his stick. Roy accordingly right in front. Working against Tony Rush. Here's Tavares up top as the veteran trying to take some time off the penalty clock. Keenan Tavares to the back of the net. Short-handed goal with 5.5 seconds to go in the corner. A textbook give and go. He gives the ball up to Keenan. Now he goes back door. He's standing there waiting. Keenan hills him so well. He feeds it to the backside. Elliott has to go. Watch. Keenan gets it from Tavares. Now he feeds back door. And Elliott has to go from the right pipe to the left pipe. It's a slam dunk for Tavares. And credit that to his great experience. He is an opportunistic, as Mike French, the general manager of the Wings, called him. And he was in the right place at the right time. Time has run out in the first quarter. And we've got three to go. The Bandits four, the Wings two. It's the championship game on Prime. Kid is play. 50% of it is attitude and style. And play is kid. You're gonna be Blade Brown. You gotta know where Blade Brown comes from. Thought you crawled out from under a rock. Ah! And they're a class act. Come on, man, that ain't half of what went down. How about giving a brother some credit? Yeah, you heard him. Give him some credit. Oh, oh very funny. Talk about bringing a brother down. The Bandits with a 4-2 lead over the Philadelphia Wings. One man that must be concerned about that, general manager Mike French. He's standing by with Dover Roosevelt. Mike, you guys scored the first goal of the game with Paul, Paul Gate on a man up. They, they called the goal back. It was a stick check, and they got you guys ended up with a penalty. It hurt you. What, what, was the, what happened out there? Well, I, I don't know. It's a, kind of an unwritten rule in the championship game, especially that you probably... I, we wouldn't make that call, but... Uh, we can check everybody's stick, but I guess that's water over the dam, and we got to move on. Okay, are the wings playing up to your potential tonight? What do you expect? Yeah, I think we are. I think we're getting loose balls like we thought we, we'd do. Uh, um, I think we're uh, giving them a couple of too, too many opportunities, and hopefully we can shut them down. Okay, thanks, Mike. Well, an interesting comment there by General Manager Mike French saying we wouldn't check it. Well, they'll all do anything they, they want to do to uh, win this game. And you'll, you'll pull out all the stops to get the championship ring. Mike French, one of the greatest players to ever play lacrosse, by the way. He's in the Hall of Fame. Still a power play situation as we return to action for the Philadelphia Wings. That a short run goal scored against them. With only five seconds to go in it. And it will expire as the bandits come down on the counterattack. Out of the box, he's wide open. Mahar out of the box, into the action. Well, he wasted no time. Johnny came right out of the box, he was begging for the ball, almost got a one on one with the goal. He couldn't quite pull it off. Bob Hamley with a shot from the outside, goes wide to the left side, counterattack, Paul Gate picking it up with one hand. He hits the left pipe. The 
Let's take a look at the first quarter stats as we get into the second quarter. You know the score. The shots don't go darn even. Total shots. These stats are real good, except Philadelphia. I mean, they're real even. Philadelphia winning the faceoff 6-2. to two. Buffalo has to increase that margin. And the ground ball is about even as well. Watch this hit on Paul Gate. He takes a beating. Rich Gilmore drives them into the boards. They get possession back because of this hit. The Wings with 13 on the shot clock. John McAvoy out of Illinois. Three in front for Finneran for the goal for the Wings. 4-3. It's a one-goal game. Well, I have a, a theory about this game, John, that everybody knows what the Stars will do, and a lot of times a guy like Finneran will rise up and have a three-goal game to really win it for his team. Finneran can do it accordingly for the other team, but here's Finneran making a sensational cut. He's a great all-around player, Kevin Finneran is. Good eyes for the field for feeding. Here he makes a, a nice cut across the crease, gets the ball, and immediately redirects it to the far pipe. A big goal for Kevin Finneran. 4-3, the score, 13-26 to go in the first half, and the Bandits with it all. Randy Marnes into the offensive zone. Possibly looking for Tavares in the middle. The centering pass goes too far. Tavares chases it into the corner, picked up by Kevin Alexander. Eight on the shot clock. Alexander working around the pick. Down goes to his left. Two on the shot clock. Alexander with a shot. Elliott thought he had it. Tavares going after the 50-50 ball, fighting Gabriel, excuse me, Volker, and the loose ball push will give it to the Wings. Tavares will come off the field now, rest his leg, but Alexander's spending a lot of time out on the field, and that is not a typical Alexander move. He like, they like to get him the ball down low, right next to the goal. He's a tremendous finisher, nobody better. Tavares headed towards the bench, but stayed out on the field. He's playing defense against Conley, and Conley's shot goes high into the net. Now he's coming off. Them, they have a lot of confidence in that man, John Tavares. He plays both ends of the field as good as anybody in the league, except he has that hamstring injury. Terrace Kilgore with a shot wide. Alexander going for the rebound. See Back how high he field. is, John? Excuse me. Normally, Kevin Alexander here is playing way down by the goal. He's getting the ball a lot up high. Maybe a new offensive philosophy for Bartlett. But this is where it hurts it because he doesn't have the speed he used to. Martin going all the way. Cowie. Did he save him? No. It's a goal for the Wings. And we're tied at four. Well, again, I can't say enough positive things about Kevin Alexander, but the fact is he's in his upper 30s. He's been in every big game in Canada, and he can't help you in the speed race. Here, Alexander gets caught high. That's why you like to have him low. And now the player for the Wings just comes down and runs right by him, one-on-one -on -one with Cowie. Here's Martin again, a defensive specialist who really takes advantage of uh, Alexander's lack of speed and gets the shot off against Cowie. Big goal to tie it up. 11.37 to go in the first half from the odd in Buffalo. And another penalty about to be called after possibly a high stick. Six attackers on for the wings. Conley fires the shot. It hits the back of the net. And as Cowie touches it, a penalty will be called. Well, the first time these two teams met, nobody scored three goals in a row in the seesaw battle. Same way today so far. Two goals this game. Oh, now the Buffalo scoring two, then Philadelphia scored two, then Buffalo scored two, and now Philadelphia scored two, but they're threatening to make it three in a row. Jim Beltman gets two minutes for slashing. And that really hurts because he is such an integral part of that man down unit. Now Glenn Lay is in there, number five, playing that low position. Check in front. Carried over the bar by Cowie. Glenn Lay sweeps it back to Cowie. Finneran with that backcourt defense, and Cowie almost saw the ball go into the net from his own player. Long pass into the corner. The Astrotur bounce will take it into the stand. Well, Tavares came on to try to get the ball. Lay came off, and now they reverse that substitution. Glenn Lay playing in Veltman's spot, and you're losing a lot of experience with Veltman in the box. Come on, Paul Gate in front to the back of the net. The Wings 
with technically their second lead of the game after a Paul Gates goal, but the first one was disallowed. Well, Finneran again, four. and Finneran's a key on this, John, because Finneran sets up down low. He'll look away. Watch Finneran. He looks to the left. He feeds to the right. Ball came right inside the defense. Glenn Lay again, not picking it up. Now, see, Glenn Lay is not as used to playing that as Beltman. Beltman, I'm sure, I would, you know, with a little experience, would have had a stick in the face of Gates. But credit Finneran with a look away feed and a big goal in the power play. They are really cranking up the numbers in the power play. And the wings come away with the faceoff, and Chris Glenn doesn't get it the first time, gets it the second time, and all of a sudden, a two-goal lead for the Philadelphia Wings with 10-15 to go in the second. Chris Glenn gives Philadelphia the big advantage in the faceoff. That's why they're getting so many. He is a tremendous faceoff specialist. He can play the offensive end, and here he comes down, gets the ball, and just fouls up. Here he is on the faceoff, comes in, keeps putting pressure, fouls up his first shot, and then when the defense is unsettled, gets it behind Cowley. Chris Flynn, an All-American player at University of Penn. Look at this. Puts it right behind Cowley, and they are getting a big momentum run with four in a row. Terry Gate had the ball right in front of the crease. Counterattack. Rich Kilgore going after it. Reached for the ball, and Rob Sheck guilty of the push. Six four wings on prime. We've got Ted Swicky here, the goalie for the Detroit Turbos, of all-pro perennial. And Ted, the goaltending tonight's been superb. I know you'd want to be in the game, but what do you think about it? Oh, any team that's going to win a game like this with a crowd like this, they have to have good goaltending. These boys, Cowie and Elliott, are coming up really big. Okay, well, thanks for joining us. It's kind of weird not seeing the great one in the nets for a championship game. Well, Sawicki so set the standard for goalie play in the Major Inter Lacrosse League, and uh, these guys are just trying to follow that example. We're seeing two great ones in Dallas Elliott and Ross Cowie. Tavares tries Elliott. He deflects it wide. And the loose ball push will give the ball to the Bandits. First time Tavares has really tried to initiate offense up top. He may be getting a little more comfortable with his hamstring injury. Stewart working against Scott Gabrielson, and there's a pileup right in front of the net. Uh, they really gave it a, a, a huge rocket shot to Tavares, but looks like two guys will go. The referees have to get control of the game, so they might send two players. They're sending Bill Fox to take two players and putting them in the box to settle down the defense. I don't have to tell you how tough it's been on defense. You're home watching this. It's been unbelievably it's physical. And that, this play right here started with John Tavares trying to get open off the ball, and they were really pushing him around. Randy Burns goes into the box for the Bandits. Well, the Philadelphia Wings got the worst part of this because Martin is the defensive specialist, and they'd like to have him out there. Coach Evans would like to have him out there, really shutting down the big guns like Keenan. Four on four, Keenan to the back of the net. being on this man's shoulders. He is one of the best players on this team. Tavares gets a lot of the, headli uh, the headlines. Look at Keenan come in. Just a hard shot. He's got a tremendously accurate and fast shot. He had four goals in the last game in the semifinal to get him to this championship. Keenan steps up to the plate when Tavares is hurt. He plays defense, excellent defense, and great offense. Coming away with it, Darius Kilgore. Played off the ball by Volker. Beltman tries it behind the back. He can't get it. Goes out for the ball. Gets it on top of Stewart. And with an opening, flips it over to Darius Kilgore, but he's not there. 50-50 ball being fought over. Beltman picks it up. Who else? Keenan up top. Parried over the bar by Dallas Elliott. Beltman picks it up again. Darius Kilgore has it. Here's Keenan working against Miller. He wants the left-handed shot. Darius Kilgore with a low shot. Well, Alec did a great job of turning away two big shots on that series. A lot of pressure put on by the Buffalo Bandits, but Elliott 
two great saves to keep his team in the one goal lead. Four on four situation, who's got the advantage? Well, in that case, I really think it was Philadelphia because Martin goes to the, uh, to the penalty box, and he is a defensive specialist for Philadelphia, so they were left a little bit short-handed with their defensive guys and a lot of space for the great sticks of Buffalo. There's Paul Gay with six on the shot clock. Just left it wide by Kelly and the new 30. John, you're back down the other end with a lot of space. I don't think anybody's better than Paul Jerry Gates. Again, this team, each team here is loaded with all-star, all-pro players from the mill. This is the best against the best. We'll take a look at the all-pro teams coming up on the course by halftime report. Chris Tavares, 11 seconds at the double penalty situation. Hello, John Tavares. As great as Dallas Elliott is, he has a tendency sometimes to allow these shots on the outside. Now, this was no slouch shot. Tavares set up a pick. Watch him set up a pick. They get a pick for Tavares. He takes his time. He fakes the shot there, waits till there's a screen from the defense, and then just gives it all he has. First the pick, then the screen from the defense, and then a rocket shot to the corner. Elliott is better when you're in his space. He has a tendency to leave the corners open when you're far away. He doesn't step out high to cut the angle. Emmett's on the attack once again, right off the faceoff, but excellent defense by Chris Flynn taking the ball away. So the injured Tavares, two goals so far. He's on his normal all-pro pace. Adrenaline may be accounting for a lot of that. Here's Kevin Finland. We're tied at six. Six forty-two to go. First half. Cowie with another save on the shot by Jennifer. Cowie's had a great first half. I don't think Les Bartley wants to go to his bench. Geary has done uh, a good job for him, but he really wants to stay with Cowie. On the other hand, Dave Evans, I wouldn't be surprised if he sees Elliott suffering. He'll go to Metke in the second half. Bob Hamley with the ball outside. Shot taken by Rich Kilgore. Off the rebound. Tried the jump shot. It won't go. Rebound picked up by Gabriel. So very dangerous. Putting it right in front of the crease. Troy Cordingley, the rookie, comes away with it. He spins. Looks to Byron. It's nailed by Bill Miller. Miller. Two minutes. That has to be two minutes. Troy Cordingley was cross-checked by Bill Miller. Well, the key is he was hit right in the head, and that'll give Miller two minutes. That's a dangerous play that nobody in major indoor lacrosse really likes to see. You can make the cross-check, but don't go up to the head. And that shot was right into the helmet. He launched the helmet with the impact. Accordingly, he has been very active, and he could have been a big part of the offense. 6-6 six, six at the off. at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Bill Barroza is amongst the 16,325. Where are you, Bill? I've got one of the excited fans here at Buffalo Band. It's, it's loud, it's crazy. I just want to ask him if the seats are as good up here as down at the glass. Oh, it's better, better. You can see it all from up here. Bill's even got Sabretooth up there. <laughs> Look at that. That's fun. It's a lot of fun here at the Odd. I don't think there's a more intimate arena than the Odd with 16,000 people. John, the seats put you right on the field. We feel like we're perched over the field. On this power play, it's the first power play I've opportunity for the Bandits. It's a power play situation for the Buffalo Bandits and Tavares makes the most of it.
Tavares showing why he's an all-pro. He's an opportunistic player. That ball was left on the field. Now watch, somebody should be taking Tavares and leveling him. They leave him on his feet, and he picks up the ball and just puts it in on Elliott. Elliott could not see it. Watch, nobody levels Tavares, and then Elliott doesn't know where it is either. Tavares with a great stick. When he finally got possession, he knows what to do with it. Three goals for John Tavares. And the Bandits have the lead once again, 7-6 to six with 5-19 to go in the first half here at the Odd in Buffalo. John Horton, Leif Elsmo. Wow. Here's John Conley on the offense. Takes the long Maybe shot. That one goes wide. Almost went off the foot of Cowley. Back into the net. Nice job by Cowley to turn around and react to it off the boards and keep possession. You don't want to give it back to the offense. Right in front, Troy Corningly, who's shaking out the cobwebs. Both teams at full strength. Kilgore tried to get it to Corningly. It does. But Corningly shot. Can't get by Dallas Elliott. You can't work it any better than that, though. Kilgore and accordingly, we're going to get some goals if they keep that down the last round. 50-50 ball. Hillary gets him. Break away against those friends. What a run! Shot by Hillary goes right into the face mask of Dallas Elliott. A shot like that took him out of the game last year. Hillary with a one-handed shot. Hits the pipe. Tavares off the rebound. He shoots. Stop left and wide by Elliott. Really has a sensational stick and deceiving speed. Two great shots turned away by Dallas Elliott. The hold will give them out of the bandits and the fans here at the arm like that one. Now we're gonna try to get Alexander on the field, get him down low, and that's where Bartley's putting him down low by the goal. He's a tremendous finisher. Tavares starts the action. Tavares at the point. His shot goes wide. Mons tried to pick it up. Tavares does. Fires it in there right in the pads of Elliott. Always looking for the long pass. Barnes comes away with it. Alexander looking for the centering pass behind the back. Stewart to Tavares. His shot goes across the crease and pulled in by Elliott. Push will give the ball to the Bandits when we return. I want you to see something right. She has a gift. Watch this. Are you okay, honey? I just uh, ran. Hey, at least it's five of them, man. Yeah, I know. My girl. I never made it with another sergeant before. Shut up, Rex. They're back, and they're bringing down the house. Lethal Weapon 3. Back at the yard in Buffalo, New York, 7-6. The Bandits with the lead and coming up on the closing line at halftime report. Lee Belsmo gets an opportunity to talk to one of the men involved in the foundation of this league, Russ Klein. Russ will take a look at the All-Pros. That guy may be an all-pro fan. What is that, the ultimate warrior bandit fan? Well, as we look at both teams getting ready for the last three minutes and 41 seconds, each team enjoys a sensational home crowd. You know, you get 16,000 plus in Philadelphia. You get 16,000 plus here. They both have a tremendous following, and it really helps when you see a game like this going into the fourth quarter. It's kind of nice to have 16,000 people on your side. And one thing I have to give credit to is the public address announcer for the Buffalo Bandits. He gets these fans into the game like no one I've ever heard. Let's see when they're starting on the offense. They had a chance now to reload the offense for the Bandits and start with Dalton up top. Mistake there by the Bandits giving the ball right back to the wings. Well, accordingly, he was getting the ball. He just stepped out. Not fast enough. He didn't come out and meet the ball. It was taken away beautifully by Hornets. There's Rockshek out there along with the Gate Brothers and Paul Denikin. So far, the big three for the Bandits are making an impact. The big three for uh, the Philadelphia Wings not really putting up the big numbers. There's Rockshek with one on the shot. One long shot. Paul in by Towers. Rockshek, all American from Towson State. Nobody has a harder shot than him, and you saw that one from about 30 yards. Rich Kilgore. Inside for Tom Emmick, who tried to shovel it in. That was a great feed. 
push ball gives it back to Buffalo. Elliott now down. He looks like he may be laboring. He's getting a lot of hits around the crease, but it just wasn't picked up cleanly. A nice play, well conceived. Get him flat, man. Tavares in front, dumps it. What a touchdown back to the left. Rich Kilgore. They don't call this the odd for nothing. This one starts with Tavares. Tavares gets all the defensive attention. He backs up Resch right to the goal. Watch Tavares. He comes in, locks it against Resch. It's Resch and Tavares. And then he flips it over to the far side. And Elliott is all out of position. Beautiful job by the off man. Watch this. Oh, it's Billy Miller. I'm sorry. Miller's locked up defensively. Tavares takes it in and just dumps it to the back side. You saw Elliott come sprawling across. No way Elliott can make that save. It has to be the backside defense. Big play. Rich Kilgore with his second goal of the night. Loose ball in front of the crease. If they want the seizure, they'll give the ball away. Well, these teams have been mere images of each other. Four straight goals by Philadelphia have been matched now. Keenan, two by Tavares and one by Kilgore. Back to a two-goal lead. Chris Flynn fighting in along the boards. This is Gary Gate. Gate finds a seam. Can he find the shot? No. Look for the one touch, stolen right away, Randy Mars taking it the other way. Mars had a three on two, John, he didn't recognize it, he didn't want it, he was looking for a big gun like Keenan. Keenan with the shot right into the stick of Elliott. McAvoy looking for the long pass, waits, waits, doesn't find it immediately. Oh, got some tired Buffalo Bandits in there right now. Gary Gate in front, danger zone, he's taken down, the hold will give it off. Key matchups down here, Gary Gage. Keenan is playing defense there, and let's see how the other ones shape up. Checks on the field, balls on the field. The entry pass to Chris Flynn goes a little bit wide. 15 on the shot clock. Flynn fires, deflected wide. Oh, Lee, as they like to say, is wow. Wow. So they were saying he lost it for a moment, but he turned around, picked it up. We are into the final minute of the play in the first half, 8-6 Bandits. And listen to the fans here at the yard. of a good goalie is an outlet pass. You saw Cowie try to lay it out and let Bob Hamley run under it. Hamley's got that deceiving speed. He just couldn't quite reach it. That would have been a lot of pressure on Elliott. And apparently they've called Bob Hamley for a slash for another such call. Tough break. Hamley misses the uh, outlet pass for Cowie. Not his fault. And then gets called on a slash. Uh, they're down Illegal use of the hands. Apparently, he went after the ball with his hand instead of the stick. And you're home and seeing how much firepower there is in this power play. It's deadly. Derek Keenan has been hit in the face with the ball. Play goes on. Five seconds to go in the half as Keenan is down. The ball will get nowhere near the net, but right now we got to worry about Derek Keenan. Well, they would hate to lose any player, but especially one as important as Derek Keenan. Now remember, one year ago, a pivotal part in the championship game was a rocket shot that took Dallas Elliott out of the game right to the face mask. Now it's deja vu all over again, pardon me, Yogi Berra, as Derek Keenan takes one either to the mask or right to the throat, and he is feeling a little woozy, but I think he'll be okay. Come on, Keenan. Well, Keenan is such a big part of the offense and the defense. He's going right into the to the training room with only five seconds left. Let's see if we can see what happens to Derek Keenan. It comes out to the crease. There it is. Somewhere in there, it might have been a stick to his face. Ball oh, bounces off the player, off Rob Chevy, and went right into his face mask. It could have found its way into his eye. Who knows? We'll find out at halftime. 
We've got to have the play, and we're back with Coors Light Halftime Report in a moment. Play in the Coach Sports State Hoop It Out, the NBA's official three-on-three -three tournament. Call now to play in June at the Neshaminy Mall or the Echelon Mall. Every player gets a free T-shirt and free tickets to sporting events worth $100. Separate youth, teenage, and adult divisions. You play against teams your own age and height. To play, call now or get an entry form at Sunoco Food Markets. In the Bucks County Courier Times or the Intelligence or the Record. $5 discounts for Prism subscribers. Hoop It Up brought to you by Coach Sports State. Snapple, Power 99, Budweiser, and Prism. Back at the yard in Buffalo, time for the Coors Light Halftime Report. The Bandits with an 8-6 to six lead. John Horton back along with you, and Bill Barroza has an opportunity to talk to the coach of the Bandits, Les Bartley. Bill is standing by down on the field. Bill? Hey, Les, you've got an 8-6 to six lead right now. Is the game uh, progressing the way you expected? Uh, it is, really. I mean, uh, they were up on us by a couple and we came back. Uh, we're moving the ball better. Uh, it's, it's the game we expected it to be, a real championship game out there. One of the concerns was John Tavares and his hamstring. How's he doing on the bench there? Well, John's doing pretty well. We aren't using him a lot defensively, but uh, we're, we're using him more offensively. Okay, thank you, Coach. Good luck the second half. Big one, a second half of very big lacrosse coming up for the Buffalo Bandits. But right now, let's take a look back at the 1993 season. A lot of great players, a lot of great plays. The All-Pro teams have been announced. Let's take a look. Leading off the first team All-Pro from the Philadelphia Wings, Paul Gate. The first player in Major Indoor Lacrosse League history to score 100 goals. And here's one of the reasons why. Great moves here against the Baltimore Thunder. Paul Gate has pretty much revolutionized the game of indoor lacrosse, along with, of course, brother Gary. Third consecutive time he's made first team all pro. It's only his third year in the league. Here working earlier against the Buffalo Bandits, he comes from everywhere, even with a shovel shot. Gary Gate. John Tavares, we're seeing a lot of Tavares tonight. He burst onto the scene last year and has made quite a difference for the Bandits this year. He is everyone's all-pro. Defensively, Dave Petromala, second straight year on the first team, all-pro team. Petromala out of Johns Hopkins was a legend in college and making himself a legend in the major indoor lacrosse league. Jim Veltman, Dr. Hoover. This man picks up more loose balls than a machine out on a tennis court after a tennis lesson. But he can score, too, and get the assist. And finally, the goalie, Dallas Elliott. He's had quite a game this evening, has had quite a season in 1993. To get the ball by Dallas Elliott, you've got to be very good. But one thing Elliott can do very well, throw the long ball, which he does here against the New York Saints as Paul Gate puts it to the back of the net. Taking a look at the second team, all pro selections, John Tucker out, the Thunder, Jeff Jackson also from Baltimore, Tom Carmine from the Blazers of Boston, Derek Keenan from the Bandits, Rob Sheck from Philadelphia, and the goalie, Sal Lacasio. a look at the All-Pro team. It's been an All-Pro year for the Major Indoor Lacrosse League. We're seeing a great game here for the World Championship. But one of the people that was instrumental in bringing the Major Indoor Lacrosse League to life was a gentleman by the name of Russ Klein. Before the matchup for the World Championship, Leaf had an opportunity to talk to the man who brought us lacrosse. Well, thank you, John. It's my pleasure to introduce our fans, reintroduce, I should say, our fans to Russ Klein, who is a co-founder, co-owner of the Major Indoor Lacrosse League, along with Chris Fritz. And Russ, I've been with you for seven years. We've had dramatic growth, continual growth, and uh, it's very exciting. This year, one of the best years, one of the positive things that you saw out of 93. 
Well, Lee, there was a lot of things. Number one was our attendance was up, and it's been up now two years in a row, which is very exciting in a tough economic time. We've seen lacrosse continue to grow and continue to expand. We've had great sponsor support, Coors Light, Brian, STX, Adidas. The level of, of, of competition and the conditioning of our athletes, I think our game is better today than it's ever been, and we're in 40 million homes on the Prime Sports Network, and this is very exciting for our future to expand this league and to certainly introduce it to other people. Russ, I think one of the most dramatic things about the mill from day one was that you had a course, you charted a course, and that stuck every year. You've had something that you targeted and the success has been there. The development has been dramatic is what I'm saying. Talk about the development of the league. Well, you know, when we did the first game, you did it. Uh, we had about 5,000 in attendance in Washington for our first championship game. Tonight, it'll be sold out. It's on live television. It's on to the nation, on Prime Sports Network. It's on live radio. We've seen a tremendous growth in the excitement of, of, the, of the sport itself. The league has survived through some tough economy. We see a, a growing season ticket base, which is important. More people are playing in the United States look, in, in lacrosse than ever before. And, and we have, have certainly, I think, at least gotten to the seven-year place where we needed to get to. Now we have to chart that course very carefully and grow and expand it. Uh, in this, with the same diligence and the same cautiousness that we did in the first seven. So what are the specific goals for the future? Well, we certainly intend to expand, but we are, we're looking carefully. We've got to have a player base, and we've got to have a, a fan support base, and we've gotten a lot of people express interest in that across the country. We've got to get new sponsors, and we have a company out of New York working with us, and we think that's coming very soon. Mill Pro is a new licensing division of the Major Indoor Lacrosse League. We're seeing a lot more apparel being worn. And then, of course, I think to keep the quality of the game, the excitement of the game, and to can continue to make it a fun sport for the players and, of course, for the fans. Well, I think everybody would agree with that. It is very exciting. And as ABC's Wide World of Sports said this week, one of the most exciting new sports in the World Cross. We thank Russ Klein, and we'll be back with more of our Coors Light Halftime Report in just a moment. It's a silver time. My Uncle Ernie loves the Phillies, but he's such a lousy driver, he can never make it to the vet to see him play. He even got his insurance canceled trying. So to get Uncle Ernie off the road and into Veterans Stadium, we got him Prism. Crock, Dykstra, Dalton, the Phillies are gearing up for an exciting season, and Prism has 45 games from Veterans Stadium. To order Prism, dial 1-800-CABLE-ME. Call now and get installation for only $4.95 or a free upgrade. I can't believe Uncle Ernie makes his living as a driving instructor. Back at the Audit Buffalo for the Coors Light Halftime Report, 8-6. to six. The Buffalo Bandits with a halftime lead, and usually, Leaf, when I'm this tired, it's at the end of a game, but we've only played <laughs> half of this Boy, one. It's been a rough one, I tell you. The emotion out there, this one really has more intensity, no question about it. We're showing highlights, as you've seen throughout the game. More intensity in this game than any game I've seen in the major indoor lacrosse league. It's taking its toll, a lot of these players getting bumped around. First thing that comes to my mind and something that has to be addressed right off the bat is the Paul Gates situation. Did that change the complexion of this game? Well, I think there's no question about it. The team from Philly scores first. You're right out of the gun scoring. Your best player is on a roll, and, and right away that's not only negated, taken away, but then his stick goes into the box. He has to get new equipment. He's mad about that. The team's depressed about that. New life for Buffalo, and off that, they get two goals to go ahead 2-0. So no question that had an impact. Let's take a look at some of the halftime highlights and a man making a highlight film all on his own, John Tavares. We mentioned he's a member of the All-Pro team. Well, we were worried about his hamstring, but this goal makes the score 6-6, and it's Tavares' second goal of the game. He went on to score one more in the half to make it three for the first half, but this, this is the follow-up goal right here. This is the seventh goal, and Tavares, look at how opportunistic he is. Nobody leveled him, so he had a chance to get the ball up, and when he gets up, he knows what to do with it. He beats Dallas Elliott, who really had no chance to see that ball, but Tavares, an impact player. If you're counting, big three against big three, the big three from Buffalo leads five to two. This is Rich Kilgore, and Kilgore has been a big part of that first half, too. He has two goals, John. Kilgore 
the younger brother Rich has been an impact player for the Buffalo Bandits. But again, the big three that we showcased up front, the guys you have to watch, Buffalo leads their big three, have five goals. The big three from Philadelphia has two goals. So they are really doing the job. Let's take a look at some of the numbers from the first half. And I believe when we see the numbers, we'll see it's a pretty darn even game. Well, it really is. Face-off's the big factor for Philadelphia. They're getting those possessions, thanked mostly to Chris Flynn. Ground balls, though, go back to Buffalo. So the equalizer on the face-offs is the fact that Jim Veltman, Hoover, and company winning the ground ball battles to get possessions back. Hustle has been a big part of this game, and a lot of that hustle is attributed to those goals right there. Yep, John Tavares leads everybody with three goals. That was the big question mark. When you got the best guy in the league playing up to snuff or close to it, you're going to be tough to beat. The Gate Brothers, two goals, three assists. Both teams have two unassisted goals. You've got to watch those assists. They want to move the ball, but Tavares is on target, and they're shutting down the big three from Philadelphia. While we were in a break, I looked up at the crowd and said, are we having fun yet? I didn't think it could get any better than the last championship game. And then all of a sudden we had the matchup here at the odd between the Wings and the Bandits. And now this one is topping that. I would love to have been in the uh, half times for the Philadelphia Wings especially. After having that goal by Paul Gate taken away, this is a team that wants that championship ring for Dave Evans, who's retiring. They're a quality team with tremendous players, and we got a whole half to go. You know Dave Evans pretty well. What kind of things do you think he's saying to his team? He's going back to basics, but I tell you what, I think he wants the Gate brothers to step up. These are tremendous players who get so much attention defensively. He's got to have his big boys step up to the plate and score some goals. He needs Sheck and the Gate to produce. Speaking of Dave Evans, the man himself. Dave Evans is standing by with Bill Barroza. Bill? I've got Dave Evans, coach of Philadelphia Wings. It's his last game before he retires. Coach, not talking about retirement, but what about what about the game? 8-6, what are you going to do second half? Well, I think we all retired on ground balls in that first half. We, we, we got totally dominated on ground balls, and that should be somewhere where we dominate. I think we have maybe a little more athletic team than they do normally. Tonight we didn't, and really that, that becomes the game. We've got to dominate the ground balls, and I think uh, they've got a couple of outside shots. Johnny Tavares scored from outside. Keenan scored from outside. We've got to put a little more pressure on the ball carrier. But I think that comes from not getting the ground balls. You start playing a little more defensively. And, uh, hey, we got, we got 30 minutes to pull it out, and, uh, you know, time will tell. Okay, well, good luck to you, Coach. Thanks, Bill. We've got a half to go from the odd in Buffalo, the 1993 World Championship, the second half face-off when we return. Yeah. It's a silver time. It's a silver play. It's a silver setting at a silver pace. It's kid is play. 50% of it is attitude and style. And play is kid. You're gonna be Blade Brown. You gotta know where Blade Brown comes from. I thought you crawled out from under a rock. Ah! And they're a class act. Come on, man, that ain't half of what went down. How about giving a brother some credit? Yeah, you heard him. Give him some credit. Oh, oh very funny. Talk about bringing a brother down. Back at the Odd in Buffalo Memorial Auditorium, if you want to be formal. Eight to six the score, and we're in the home of probably some of the loudest fans in the major indoor lacrosse league. Dallas Elliott back for half number two. He had a rough half in the, in the first half in that it was a lot of physical activity around him. He's beat up from the season. He is the league's best. He's going to go for the gold in the second half. Ross Cowie in goal for the Bandits, and the Wings start the second half on a power play for the next 90 seconds after the illegal use of the hands to Hamley, and Gary Gate comes out with it, tried to get it to Finneran for the one touch, and Cowie is there, but the ball is loose just outside of the crease. It's picked up by Gary Gate on the loose ball, looking for the pass, takes it to Brother Paul, he can't get him on the first time, tries it again, Finneran picks it up on the rebound. Belton saved the shot again. The Gates getting the ball right in front of Cowie, but Belton puts the stick in there and just redirects the shot. Good news for the Bandits. Keenan is out there. That shot that went through his face mask will get a chance. 
trying to see that face mask as the game goes on because it's wide open, John. He doesn't have any bars in front of his eyes. That ball went right in and caught him around his eye, but he is playing, so he must be all right. Six on the shot clock. Time running out on the wings on this possession. Sheck goes after it, and that will be a 30-second violation. Bill Barroza, you know a little bit about the mask there? Radian, the general manager of the Buffalo Bandits, he said the ball actually came through with a force that broke the metal bars and went through and hit him in the eye, but he's back out there as Leaf and John have uh, noted. Wow. Well, it, it, maybe he had bars before that, before <laughs> this happened. I'll tell you right now, there are no bars that cover up the eye area. Most of the other masks, and again, this could be just taste for him. He likes to have more of an open area so he can see the ball better. Alexander hit in the back by the stick, and... Keenan uh, is hurt. Keenan is hurt. He's limping. And this was off the ball. It was a knee twist or an ankle. There he is right there. And that might be an AstroTurf twist yep. there. There it is. He came up. It could have been a knee twist, but it might have been the AstroTurf starting. Or when he stopped, as we all know, AstroTurf has a tendency to grab. You can see he has more of a tennis-type shoe. There's no big cleat to grab the AstroTurf, but it sticks sometimes, and he definitely is favoring his leg as he comes off the field. He gets through one injury, and now he's dealing with another one. Kevin Alexander up high taking that shot. John, we've seen him get burned there before. He's a great shooter, but a better finisher in close. The Wings out shot to Ben is 40 to 20 in the second half of game one. They really came on with a with a flurry. They outshot 20 to 10 in the fourth quarter. So Buffalo really has to keep the pressure on. Off the pipe shot, whistle blows, illegal pick the call against the Wings, and the Bandits thought they had a fast break opportunity, but the fast whistle called it. Here's Stu Aaron in front. Bounce shot, won't go. And pushing from the back. A good look by Tavares to find Aaron, and Aaron almost gets that one past Elliot. Nobody picked up Aaron on that cut across the cylinder. Stu Aaron had stick checked away by Kevin Finneran, and they're going to call him for a two minute penalty. The Bandits have just gotten to full strength, and now they will go on the power play with 13.03 to go. 8-6, the Bandits with the lead. Here in the third quarter, some of the fans here. Great way to start it. I'm sorry, John. Great way to start that second half. You come out, you kill the penalty. Now they have a chance to get their power play going. They haven't had that many opportunities to run this thing. This may be only their second chance. Darius Kilgore, Kevin Alexander, Bob Hanley, John Tavares, and Glenn Lay, the power play unit for the Bandits. It takes that long. Nice job. They rotated Darius Kilgore from the high right-hand shooter. They cut Kevin Alexander through. Darius Kilgore comes down and ends up wide open. Beautiful job by Les Barley. Watch what happens. Alexander cuts through. See him right there? Now Darius comes down. You see him coming to the screen. All alone. He starts high. He goes low. Alexander sucks the defense in. Right now, Alexander's taking the defense with him. Darius Kilgore comes down low, and Elliott cannot make that slide. Beautifully designed power play, and Kilgore, first goal of the playoffs. Brother Rich had gotten two goals earlier. Now Darius gets on the board, making it a 9-6. Bandits lead, 12-30 to go, Don't third quarter. Bill Miller has it stripped away by Kilgore. He gets it right back. Finneran can't get control. Glenn Lay behind the crease. Flips it to Ross Cowie. And the power play goal has given the Bandits a three-goal lead. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's the biggest lead by either team. Well, you're right. And guess who is a big part of that? Not the Gates brothers, but the Kilgore brothers. Three goals by the Kilgore brothers making an impact to the offensive Buffalo. Down on the bench, we hear from Bill DeRosa that Keenan is getting his ankle wrapped and is expected to return to play. That's a major loss for them. Again, he is a defensive specialist and an offensive specialist. Les Bartley wants Keenan not only to stop the gates on defense, but he counts on him to be a big part of the offense. He plays man up, he plays man down. Well, maybe with the ankle wrapped, he will... Uh, be a little bit slower and it'll at least be back on the field. That might be a mental lift for the Bandit. Well, that's the same kind of injury that, you know, we can talk to Tavares all we want about the hamstring. We can talk to Keenan about the ankle. You'll see when he gets on the field whether he's able to run. Ice on the eye, wrapping on the ankle. A tough night for Derek Keenan. 
Miller tries to get it by Cowley. Did he do it? Cowley has just wrapped up the ball. And they say he rolled back into the net. They will give the Wings the goal. Cowley just collapsed on the ball. And I saw an official, I saw an official raise his hand, but apparently the other one waved it off. This might be the second most controversial play of the game. Look at him comes out. Miller comes in beautifully following up. And now it's hard to see. No, that was a save. What a tremendous save by Cowie. Somehow he got a hand on it. It falls down into his chest while he's laying in front of the crease. Beautiful job. Cowie's having the game of his career. Kevin Alexander. Working against Brian Volker. Backs in. Tries the low shot. Elliott pulls it in with a stick. Kevin Alexander is not very big. You can see he has one of the best finishing sticks in the business, but it's tough for him to start up high against somebody like Brian Volker and work his way down low. Just too much to ask for the small frame of Alexander. Do you want him down there getting a pass, finishing an offense by a bigger offensive player? John Nostrand, who has been very quiet tonight, almost eerily so. You expect him to break out of a slump, possibly. Here's John Conley. He takes the shot. Cowley is there. And Cowley comes so far out of the net. Well, he does on his outside shots. He'll take the two steps up. That's why Elliott isn't quite as good on his outside shots. Because he won't take that big step out, and he leaves the corner open. Sporting lead. Deflected wide by Elliott. Big bounce gives the ball to the wings. Say, accordingly, he could have two or three goals if he was a little more comfortable with that offense. He's had his chances. Rob Boynes up top. Conley stick checked away. Keenan has an opportunity, but the ankle has slowed him down. You can tell. Veltman overruns the ball. Conley away with it. It's a two-on-two -two situation. Mahar playing on Conley. Centering pass, Mark Hahn. That hit Veltman in the face. Paul Gate tries the shot. It won't go. Reset the 30. Here's Paul Gate behind the crease. To Mark Hahn up top. Looks for the shot. It hits the pipe. Keenan with an opportunity for a break, but he has slowed down. You can tell that both the ankle and the eye are having their effect. Accordingly tries, Elliott with a wondrous save. Well, accordingly, he's been the big disappointment on the offense. He's a tremendous talent, but he has four opportunities right in the face. And accordingly, just can't get on track. Elliott has Accordingly's number. Beltman with a big hit. We'll take a break. Be back with more in a moment. Sports International, more than sticks and gloves. For a free catalog, call 1-800-BEST-STICK. Well, Les, the coach for the Buffalo Bandits, just told his team to settle down, slow it down. They've got a three-goal lead, and just be patient. The goals will come. Bill Barroza, our man close to the action, getting the inside work. Now, Bill Barroza, probably anxious down there to strap on the leather and go out and play again. It'll be Hanley against Gary Gate. There's about on par on that average that you saw just a moment ago. Here's the breakaway. Tom Hanley flips it to Glenn Ray. It's a counterattack opportunity. He's missile up top. Bates spins, gets it in front, and it spins and can't get the shot. Great offensive movement by Buffalo. They are really making the passing game work for them. You're not seeing as many passes made by Philadelphia, and that was one of the keys. I think Philadelphia has to move the ball a little bit more. They're getting a lot of attention to the big three. If the big three goes for an assist rather than a goal, it'll work. Dedekin loses a long pass. Here's Paul Gate in front. Bates Dukes to the back of the net. Paul Gate makes it 9-7. And that is Gate's second goal of the night. And Paul Gate shows you what he can do in the open field. Again, nobody has more tools to bring to the offense than Gary and Paul Gate. You look at the open field, and they don't file him up how he can move. He has the face to really arrest the goaltender. Cowie now had to come way out front like he likes to do. Now he has to back up. When you back up, he's totally unsettled, leaves the target in behind him. Paul Gate took advantage of Cowie's aggressive style in the goal, ran right past the defense, and just dunks it behind him. Kevin Alexander wins the faceoff, and Buffalo with a two-goal lead. With eight minutes to go, 
third quarter. I tell you, Elliott has been really sensational in this third quarter because Buffalo has had a lot of shots. Remember accordingly? A lot of shots right in his face in that last series. There was a shot there. He's made big saves and kept his team in the game. Tavares in front can't get a hold of the ball. Here's a counterattack opportunity. Bill Miller going one on two. If he sees an opportunity, they'll keep going, and they do. Chris Glenn with a shot. Get tried to sweep it in there, but increased violation of the call. Quick restart. Flip. Show. Quarterly save. Elliott can now. We'll take it back the other way. It's a track meet at the arm. Paul Gate coast to coast. Flipped in there by Martin. It goes wild. And John Cordingly, a tremendous player in the Canadian League, 0 for 5 within 3 feet of the goalie. That's really the story. If Buffalo goes on to lose this game, it's the great goal standing of Elliott against Cordingly, who's been doing a, a great job of getting open on the crease. Cordingly is working off the ball beautifully. Hamley takes the shot, has to pay for it as Chris Glenn nails him right in front of the crease. Here's Spinner, a talented player. Denica. Fakes the flip to McAvoy. You Bill know, Miller will have it with 15 to go in the shot clock. John, it's not unlike football. You get a lot of opportunities to score, and if you don't come up with it, you sort of uh, evens out as the game goes on. A lot of op offensive opportunities have not produced goals here for Buffalo. Four on the shot clock. Finner in front for Denikin. The red light comes on. It's a goal for the Wings. And we've got a one-goal game in the World Championship match. Well... Some of those peripheral players, Denikin and Finneran. Finneran's had a big game. He's got at least two assists, one goal. Now watch how he attracts the attention of the defense, and he'll feed it from the near side. He'll come all the way across the goal. Now the defense is a little bit unsettled. Drops back the trailing player in Cowie, just like you've seen Elliott all game. Cannot make that uh, trip from the one pipe on the left to the right pipe. That's four and a half feet. It leaves it wide open for Denikin's goal. It's a one-goal game. Glenn tries to tie it up. Cowie stays strong. Rough play in the corner. Ball into the backfield. Where Elliott will pick it up. Tony Rich lifts it up. 15 on the shot clock. Finneran going after it. Save Cowie. It's a one-goal game, and it's eerie how quiet it is in here. Well, again, you think of those offensive opportunities. Buffalo did a great job of getting a lot of great shots in the first part of the third quarter, but Elliott just put it back in their face. Now they're taking a little bit of a rest. They can't keep that pace up. Rich Kilgore can't get the shot away. Randy Marnes centers it to Bissell. Stolen away by Gabrielson. Bissell goes after it again, and Martin reels in the loose ball. Outlet pass to McAvoy across midfield. Five minutes to go in the quarter. Quarter number three, nine, eight bandits with a lead. McAvoy to the trailer. Horns, his shot goes high to the right. Bounces long. Alexander in a foot race with Mark Hahn. Hahn plays Alexander off the ball. Conley reels it in. Well, Hahn and Alexander are about the same age, but Hahn's got the better wheels at this stage in his career, and he won that foot race. One on the shot clock as Conley takes the shot. Cowie with a save and a new 30. Conley trying to get to McAvoy on the one touch. No strength. Or the rebound off the loose ball. He shoots right into the chest of Cowie. Ball loose in front. Flip back to Cowie. And what a defensive play by the Bandits. Great defensive play, but McAvoy is going to be dreaming about that slam dunk that he missed. That ball came across the far side, and he was looking at the net rather than pulling that ball in. Opportunity lost, still the one goal lead. Right in front, Derek Keenan. Looks like he's at about maybe 60%. This team is really beat up. Keenan working in front. To the back of the net, from way outside. But the officials will wave it off as the 30 second clock has just expired. You'll take a look at this pretty shot, but the 30-second clock had expired. Here we go. Keenan takes a shot, and the 30-second clock is in the picture. We can't really read it. They take away this goal, which could have an impact on any kind of comeback for Philadelphia. 9-8.
for a possible last shot. Kelly Carr gets the ball up. Somebody will have to crank it one last time. Maybe it's Carmine with nine, eight. Gets it into Desco, who can't find the four by four. Five seconds, this will be it. Philadelphia will do it. The champion, repeat champion, Philadelphia race. 1990, have I ever champion? And the Wings want to do it one more time, but right now, the Buffalo Bandits with a 9-8 advantage. 3.57 to go, third quarter lead. And teams now even in goals taken back out of the net. Keenan had one yanked back out after the red light went on, and Paul Gate had one to start the game taken away. And Elliott has been sensational in this half. You notice that shot by Keenan, though. He doesn't come out. Elliott does not come out and cut the angle down like Cowie does. That leaves a little bit of spot in the corner. If you can hit it like Keenan did, you've got something to shoot at. Gary Gate with the ball in front. Tried to get it to Rob Sheck. Loose ball in the corner. Sheck picks it up. Kilgore checks it. Sheck comes away with it. Sheck in front. Takes the shot wide into the net. Nine to eight. The Bandits with the lead. 3.29 to go in the third quarter. Back with more. The Major Indoor Lacrosse League World Championship on Prime. This unparalleled motion picture will take you on a breathtaking adventure into a remarkable triumph of the heart. Discover its uplifting power, the power of one. defense and then Gary comes down and puts on the offense pinpoint accuracy makes it a 14 to 6 game and the gates first world championship leave have a nacho here they are this place is rocking 329 left in the third I'm thinking about those offensive opportunities lost by the in this third quarter could come back to haunt them unless they get more of a pet for Philadelphia you're feeling pretty good because you're in the game Elliot has been sensational in quarter number three The Wings having trouble getting it out of their own zone. And by the time they get it over midfield, they'll only have 15 to work with on the shot clock. Alexander stays on the field looking at the mix of players. Now with Keeney a little bit hurt. They're going to count on Kevin Alexander to play a little bit of defense. Derry Gate trying to move against Stu Air. Air took him into the crease, but that push will give the Wings the ball once again. See, now, this is not the matchup that Les wants. He'd rather have Feltman here. He's on the field. He's with Keenan. Just not healthy enough to play defense. You've got guys like Alexander who can't be as effective as Keenan defending the gates and Sheck. What a pass! Shot by Boris and the bounce coming right to well, Philadelphia's coming Gilmore. back to win this game. Eric is my MVP. He has really shut the door on some tremendous offense in this quarter. Paul Gate one on one to the back of the net, but the officials wave it off. They say crease violation, and it's still a one goal. Two goals called back on Paul Gate. Big dry spell here for the Bandits. I can't get that out of my mind, John. They've had so many great shots, very, very high-quality shots, and Elliott is swinging right back in their face. McAvoy working against Tom Emick around the pick, looking for the centering pass. Gary Gate is there, but great defense being played. Here's Bill Miller. Shot clock about to run out, and it does. 30-second violation, but the ball goes off the bandit stick, bad call, bad and call. a new 30-second clock is put up there. Well, they just didn't see that, but that was a great check by Alexander. The ball went off the, the stick of McAvoy. It was a well-timed check by Alexander. He can't believe they didn't get possession back. 1.51 to go in the quarter. McAvoy moving in against Hamlin. Looks for the centering pass, does. Devikin spins quickly, can't get the shot on goal. Finneran with the loose ball, 10 on the shot clock. Seven on the shot clock as Finneran goes behind the net in front for McAvoy. His shot bounces wide. 
And a penalty will be called. Emmett gets the call on his shot on Miller. So I believe as we look at John Moradian, the GM of Buffalo, we're going to see Emmett, I think, take a trip to the penalty box. The penalty comes with 128 to go in the third quarter, 9 to 8 bandits. Philadelphia is looking good in the sense that they have really put away a lot of great shots by Philadelphia. Elliott has been sensational. Now the momentum has a chance to switch back to Philadelphia. They've scored two straight goals. Now they have a power play. They have really weathered a huge offensive storm put on by the Bandits in the third quarter. Power play opportunity to possibly tie the game. Paul Gate. Rob Sheck, his shot goes high. Real net by Stu Aaron. Derek Kinnett puts it in fourth gear. Can't get it by Elliott. Loose ball picked up by Tavares. What hustle by the Bandits. Tavares loses the stick, loses the ball, gets back the stick. Will the Bandits get the ball back? No. The Wings pick it up. Paul Gate bringing it down. Clock rolling down in quarter number three. Paul Gate deeks, but can't get the shot off. Gary Gate brings it back. He sends it in front for Federer. Rebound back to Paul Gate to the back of the net. And we are tied at 9. 34.9 seconds to go in quarter number three. Paul Gate's taking over this game single-handedly for Philadelphia. He has one shot here early on. Uh, that was a net as they pick up the replay. The follow-up, here's Gary giving it back to the middle. That's Finner and missing. But now here's Paul picking up the deflection and just puts it in. Beltman there trying to deflect the shot. Watch Beltman's stick come out. He just tries to wave it down and pinpoint accuracy by Paul Gate. Three goals on the day. Two that were called back would have given him five. He is doing it all to the offense of the Philadelphia Wings. And again, missed opportunities is the name of the game in the third quarter for Buffalo. They've had tremendous offense, only to be have that ball put right back in their face by their first team off pro goalie, Dallas Elliott. Chris Flynn wins the faceoff, but in the long run, the Bandits come away with it with a two-on-one situation. Here's Kevin Alexander, fast, shoots wide over the glass. This is the win for him with 18.4 seconds to go. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Timeout called by Dave Evans. Evans' team has really not protected Elliott, and he's had the chance to go ahead. Bill Barroza standing by with Johnny Meridian, the general manager of the Bandits. Is he happy down there? I've got John Meridian, the general manager of the Buffalo Bandits, with me. John, the game, second year in a row you're in the championship game. Is it, is it built up to everything you expected it to be? Well, it certainly was a lot different than playing in Philadelphia last year, Bill. Uh, we had a lot of fans from Buffalo go to Philadelphia, but there's certainly nothing better than playing in front of your home crowd. Well, I know the fans are enjoying it. It's loud. We wish you the best of luck in the uh, rest of the game. Thank you very much, Bill. The fans are enjoying it. So are we. We hope you're enjoying it at home. On the big three scoreboard, two goals by Paul Gate in this quarter brings the big three for Philadelphia back to four goals total. And the big three offensive players for the Buffalo Bandits have five in the first half, and they haven't gotten any in this quarter. Again, I keep thinking of how important Dallas Elliott has been to that score. There's not an empty seat in the house. And the Wings looking to get the momentum going into the locker room. Moving pick called. Evans had a pick play with Finneran coming in the middle trying to get Sheck open, and they got caught with a moving pick. I meant to say going to the bench, which both teams will do after three quarters of play. It's a whole new ball game. Fifteen more minutes to go from the on in Buffalo. The Bandits nine, the Wings nine on Prime Network.
This is the place. And from where he might never return. Who are you? What do you want? I'm doing this for her! The girl I love! Introducing Adrian Dunbar and Tara Fitzgerald and starring Ned Beatty as the one man who can bring them back together. I've got Seymour Knox, chairman of the Buffalo Sabres with me. He's an avid fan. The Bandits are going to become a tradition just like the Sabres are. Seymour, you enjoying yourself? Sure I am. It's a great game, and they're going to win another championship for Buffalo. All right, two in a row. Good luck to you. Oh, that's right. Thanks very much. And his other team has a big test coming up. The Buffalo Sabres getting ready for the Stanley Cup playoffs. But right now, we've got 15 minutes to decide the winner of the North American Cup. The Bandits, the Wings, tied at nine. And how about this? Keenan out there to face off. Bad ankle, bad face, everything. They ask everything of Derek Keenan. Offense, defense, and facing off. And the Bandits win the face off. Kilgore, the corner, to the back of the net. The drought is finished, Mr. Elsmo. Absolutely. Courting Lee kept going to the well. Finally, he gets his goal. He has been sensational at being in the right spot at the right time. Courting Lee has been working hard off the ball. Here, look how he goes back. He waits for Darius Kilgore to set it up. Now he's got one shot. He does a beautiful job of bouncing into the far pipe. Again, Courting Lee in the right spot as he has been all game long. Elliot has been his nemesis. He took his time. He gets the biggest goal of the night. Troy Courting Lee from Ontario with a beauty of a goal. Ten, nine. And how about Derek Keenan? Of all his injuries, he beats the great Chris Glenn on the face-off to set it up. It's, it was uh, Kilgore getting that fast break started. And now the Wings trying the comeback route. Paul Kent played off the ball by Keenan. Hold will be at the ball. And it's Derek Keenan again being critical down there. He won the face-off to get the fast break and the goal started. Now he's playing defense against Paul Gate. Paul Gate takes it right in. Dalton plays him off the ball this time. And another hold will keep the ball in the possession of the Philadelphia Wings with 14 minutes to go. Nice switch by Beltman. Championship. Beltman and Keenan working a nice switch down there to keep one of those two players on the Gate Brothers. It's Beltman and Keenan playing defense. Shep now has Darius Kilgore to beat. Stick check took it away momentarily. Gabrielson in front. Deflected wide. Dedekin tries it again. Darius Kilgore tries to play it back to Cowley. Very dangerous play there. The referees are continually giving the ball back to the Philadelphia Wings. Three times in a row. I'm sure they're all legal calls. But every time Buffalo pulls the ball back, they have to give it up to this great offense. Philadelphia fans are loving it. And a penalty will now be called against one of the banded players. And now the Philadelphia fans get a two-minute penalty to put Derek Keenan in the line. Well, this one was obvious. Keenan grabbed the jersey of, of, I guess it was Paul Gate coming through, and literally held him back. But they sure did get uh, look like the shaft. Oh, now Paul Gate's going in the box. Tremendous athletes that really don't get riled up. But Buffalo is getting under their skin. They pretty much shut down Gary. He only has one goal. They did an effective job against the big three. And now the tension's rising. The Wings with a great opportunity. And it goes away just like that. Every play so critical here in the fourth quarter. The Bandits with the one goal lead. Once again now, four on four situation, but this time Keenan's in the box for the Bandits and Paul Gates in the box for the Wings. Advantage? Well, the advantage again now this time, uh, I shouldn't say again, but you get more space for a guy like Gary. Yes, there's an advantage. Tavares, yes, there's an advantage. The problem with Philly is they've got one of the best open field players in the box. Paul Gate is the best guy on the field in this kind of open field. What an effort by Chris Flynn. When he couldn't pick up the ball, he just pushed it back to Dallas Elliott. What an effort. Nobody fights harder than Chris Flynn. He played football at Penn, face-off man, great midfielder, All-American player. He gives it 100% every night. Here Gate, McAvoy, to the back of the net, and we are tied at 10. It's time to Philadelphia, I think, you talk about advantage, and you saw it there, gets a little bit of an advantage with the extra space a 4 on 4 gives you. McAvoy comes through the defense, and nobody levels him. Nobody takes him off the ball. 
as it comes into the cylinder, you'll see nobody getting on the body of McAvoy. Here he is coming through the cylinder. A stick check doesn't do anything. McAvoy comes through, no double team. Good play by McAvoy off the ball. Gate finds him, a fake, a fake, and finally the shot. And after that goal, you saw a portion of the fans that have made their way up for Philadelphia. Three busloads full being treated along with 16,325 to a 10 10 game. With 12.37 to go, the Panthers were the ball. Four on four situation. Hamley kicks it over to the Hall of Famer, Kevin Alexander, against Scott Gabrielson. Alexander behind the back development. He has trouble, just flips it back. I think he thought Cordingly was back there. It was either Cordingly or he thought he had a shot. The push occurs after the 30 second clock goes off, so the Wings will get the ball. Breaks of the wings in the early moments of the fourth quarter. They continue to have a lot of minutes on offense. McAvoy to Conway. The spinner comes off the field with a line change. 21 seconds of the four on four situation. 12 minutes to go in regulation. 10 10. Conway. Spinner with seven on the shot clock. Pass to McAvoy. It may cost him an opportunity here. That long pass will expire the 30 second clock. And the Bandits will get the ball with six seconds in the four-on-four -four situation. Every offensive opportunity is so critical. Keenan still in the box along with Paul Gates. Both teams now at full strength. This error being played by Miller. Flips it back to Tavares. Double teamed by Rush and Gate. Alexander pulls it away. Looks for the shot, takes the shot, saves Elliott, pushed in there. Interference call. Elliott had a little bit of that ball, and it was an inter interference call by on Richard Hillmore, 16, who just swatted at it with his stick. But you see how dangerous Alexander is when he gets down low in possession of the ball. Nobody handles the stick better than he does. He's a tremendous finisher. Very scary for the goalie when he's down low. Mark Hahn on top of Belton. This is Conn. Tom moving in, right in front of the crease, takes the shot, it straddles the goal line and doesn't come in. Big save by Cowie, he got some part of that frame in front of it. Cowie blocks the shot and rattles around the cage and comes back out. Feldman working the play with Tavares, Tavares dives to the back of the net. on something new. That's why everyone who's serious about lacrosse plays with sticks equipment. My mother uses a stick. With sticks, you'll score more gold. Probably a thousand, hundred thousand, million. The people at sticks know the sport. The lacrosse players. The lacrosse players. I think my brother Paul works at sticks. Every goal we scored was stick sticks. Sure do. Can't say any more about it. 
I'm in the Philadelphia wing section here. It's loud, it's crazy. There's a young lady who traveled six and a half hours. Are you happy you made the trip? We're happy and we're bringing the trophy to Philadelphia! That's what the Philadelphia fans have to say. They're gonna win. Hey, John. Bill's doing a lot of traveling. That's a long way up there. <laughs> Look where he came from the field up to the upper deck. That man's in shape. Hey, he gets frequent flower balls for that one. 11-10. Bandits with a lead. Gary Gates working for the wings. And Keenan with no stick. Keenan drops the stick and plays him only with the body. Long pass. Troy Cornigley plays it on the bounce. One-on-one -on -one against Gabrielson. Cornigley looking for the shot. Gabrielson with excellent defense. Trying to get the trailer. That should be a push. Well, great running for the team from Buffalo. It was Mahar coming down following the play. Beltman with a shot that hits the pipe. Beltman hoovers it. Kilgore, Mahar. But Elliott pulls it in, looking for that long pass. Kilgore had a great shot. He had the full 18 square feet. He gave it to the wing. And look at the shots. Gates has checked 20 shots in the second half of the game. The first time these two teams met, that equaled the whole output. As they say here at Cal, we just like that with another great save. Wowie Cowie, what a game he's having, and, and equally tough, even more so maybe, Dallas Elliott. Well, that's got to help you. That's when the 16,000 fans really pay a dividend when you're playing at home. 15 on the shot clock with Cornigley. In front, taken down. Is that going to be a penalty or just a hold? They're going to call the hold. Hard to believe. It's hard to believe they don't put Flynn in the box for that one. He literally tackled him. And they put Keenan in the box for just grabbing the jersey. Here's Alexander working against Flynn. Alexander in front. Little razzle-dazzle in for the shot. Is he going to get it off? Yes. Goes just wide. Barnes going after it. McAvoy has it stolen away. Nice Here's a one on that. Chris Flynn, one on one against Cal Lee. And he gets it. And we're tied at 11. Fast That's breaks. like a penalty shot. John, so critical. We talked about it in the keys of the game. The, the fast breaks, as you can see, both these teams are real good finishers. You don't want to give them a one on one with your goalie. Flynn gets way out in front. Nobody anywhere near him. So he does the smart thing. He takes his time. This is the smart thing, though. The goalie has to commit. So nobody's behind him. He waits till he gets the target, and he just hits it. If he, hur if he hurries the shot, that more often than not will make you miss it. He takes his time. He waits for Cowie to either go right or left, expose the target, and he hit it. Beautiful job by Chris Flynn. 11 to 11. Just doesn't get much better than this game. It's trite, but it's true. Wow. So the fans regroup. The wings regroup. We try to regroup. 7-10 to go. 11-11. No screw. With four on the shot clock. Martin fires it over to Gary Gant, but that will do it on the 30 second clock. And while everyone regroups, that's a 30 second violation. Keenan took off, wanted to get the Snowbird, but took a long time for Beltman to get the ball in. So they'll come on. Pressure will come on. Tavares is one of them. They saved him on defense. Beltman and Keenan playing both ends of the field, but Tavares pretty much saving him for offense. Tavares takes the shot. That goes wide. Fast break. Off the rebound. This is Paul Gate. One on one against Kelly. Who closes the game? I don't think I've seen Paul Gate since a fast break all year. He is again. One of the top finishers, the Gate Brothers. Nobody better in the open field, one-on-one. -on -one. Paul Gate's going to try it again. This time he's taken down in front of the net. No call. Loose ball picked up by Bob Henley. I'm looking Bob Henley go down. But Gary Gate with a stick check. Gary Gate with a nice defensive stick check. Philadelphia, I bet you, is 2-1 to one almost in time of possession since they turned away that big offensive uh, push. Bandits in about the first 10 minutes of the third quarter. Second front. Gabrielson. There's Gary Gate. The roll shot. It won't go. There's a pile up in front. And we'll have to find out what's going to happen here. We'll tell you when we come back.
But take a look at Cowie closing the game. It's 11-11. Oh, when you get Paul Gate to come down one-on-one, -on -one, you hardly ever make the stop. Cowie, the biggest save of the day. Brian Lacrosse, the power behind the game. Tonight's game brought to you in part by the Buffalo Hilton, the official headquarters of Major Indoor Lacrosse in Buffalo. This is the odd in Buffalo, home of 16,325 fans and a few players. Those players, 11 to 11, the score they play to. Ross Cowan, what a game he has had, both he and Dallas Elliott. I think you can't ask any more from both of these goalies. They've had a sensational day. Shots on goal, Philadelphia really turning it up now. That one stretch I keep going back to, uh, Buffalo could have had two or three goals, but it was Elliott's big job to keep his team in it. Now, from then on, it's been Philadelphia with a, a lot of offensive minutes. Paul Gate loses the ball, and I think we've had a penalty called out on the field as soon as the Bandits got a hold of the ball. A two-minute two penalty for uh, Holman. Could be on Beltman. Now Keenan again. Derek Keenan. Here, this is interesting also. The home team has only won one of the six mil championships. That was Philadelphia. So, again, that is being threatened here. A very close game. But Keenan, you know, John, when you have the injuries, you get a little tired along with the injuries. You end up holding a little bit more. Keenan is getting in the box a lot more than he's used to. Great stick check by Darius Kilmore. Score, taking the ball away from Gary Gay. But the ball is loose, picked up by Finneran. Paul Gay in front. Jenkin looking for the shot. Save by Cowie. Another big time save by Cowie. Look at the what pass the here. Stu Aaron has to kick it in the gear to catch up to him. Being played in the corner by Finneran. And they're going to call a push from behind on Finneran. Great play by Aaron. He came in, smothered the ball. Come took on, the light push, push by Finneran to get possession. He wanted to get it some time. Aaron on the restart. 1.29 to go in the penalty to Derek Keenan. 5.09 to go in regulation. 11 to 11. This is Beltman working against Rush. Well, Alexander's a good man to have the ball. He's got to get a shot off at 10. Aired with eight on the shot clock. In front, Elliott. Looks like he pulled it in and a collision on the far side. No call. Play on, say the officials. And Finneran has it in midfield with one minute to go in the power play. Both Gate brothers are out there along with Shea, Dedekus, and Finneran working against the penalty-killing unit of Kilgore, Tavares, Veltman, and Stuart. Eight on the shot clock. Finneran looking for the centering pass. Three on the shot clock. Looked like he took the shot himself. Goes. Fast break on the counterattack. Darius Kilgore against Gary Gate. 4-14 to go in the game. 30 on the penalty. Kilgore dives in on the crease violation. Oh, no. Get the ball back. It would have been a crease violation. Well, Kilgore took a gutty move there. He's not the kind of guy who likes to drive in and come across the crease. He's an outside shooter more often than not. They need to eat up the 24 seconds. They can do it if they just hold the ball. They got a new 30-second call. A new 30-second clock on that particular call. We're under four minutes. Wow. It's been great here at the Odd in Buffalo. Glad you have joined us. And Philadelphia's got their offensive unit in there. They got the gates ready to get launched. Gary and Sheck, that is, are ready to get the ball and go to the other end. Dumpman tries to die. Barnes tries it again. Both teams at full strength as Keenan is out of the box. Bill Miller with 10 on the shot clock. Miller moves in. 
What a stick jump by Keenan. Taking it away. Five on the shot clock. Feldman takes him down. And they're going to call him for a penalty. We'll tell you about the penalty and get you caught up when we return to the odd in Buffalo. What you got on? T-shirt. We got a lot in common. <laughs> What's wrong with you, boy? Don't you know the rules? I know, Saint. People stick to their own kind. You're forced to accept that when you grow older. I never thought I would fall in love with you. I see. So you think I ain't good enough for your daughter, is that it? You never told me that your family had trouble with black folks. Back your things. We're leaving Mississippi. <laughs> to go in the game. Philadelphia 12, Buffalo 11, 16,325 here at the on. And all you folks at home watching on Prime Network, this has been a great game and has all the makings of one of those very tight games at the end that you're just on the edge of your seat. You know, the old saying from the league is, we'll sell you the whole seat, you only need the edge. I don't know how many people are going to need the edge, because they're on their feet at the arm. Wings 0-3 against the Bandits, but that might change in the next two minutes. Alexander will be out for Buffalo to face off against Chris Flynn. They're pulling out all the stops. Les Bartley only has Less than two minutes to go. Longest winning streak is in jeopardy. 17 going back to February 8th of last year for Buffalo. 16,325 on their feet. 144 to go, and here we go. The Bandits down by one. Derek Keener. Inside, Alexander.
at the defense on Alexander. He still manages to catch it and then wrap it around his shoulders. The Bandits win the faceoff, pushing the call. The Bandits will get it. One, oh, two to go. We're tied at 12. Here at the on in Buffalo. And we're under one minute. Everyone on their feet. Tarakina taken off his feet by Chris Flynn. And that will be a two-minute penalty on Chris Flynn. Immediately, the official said you can't take a man's feet out from under him, which is what Chris Flynn did. And the fans love him. Well, tip for tat. That was, that was Tommy Young. Same referee called both plays. Look at him go down low. Terrible play and a good call by Tom Young. That ball, or that block was down below the knees. Whoa, big opportunity. Now, don't forget, both these teams, John, can score and score from man down situations. So both these units are, da are dangerous right now. Keenan has it to Hamley in front. Tavares with a one touch. It goes wide. Ball is loose behind the crease. Holding the car. Bandits get it with 39.6 to go. The whole call on Billy Miller. Tavares will start the play. Up top to Hamlet. Darius Kilgore to Hamlet. 30 to go.
Giants win the World Championship 13 to 12. We're back for the presentation of the trophy when we return to the Odd in Buffalo. Play in the Coach Sports State Hoop It Up, the NBA's official three-on-three -three tournament. Call now to play in June at the Echelon Mall or at the Shamini Mall. Every player gets a free T-shirt and free tickets to sporting events worth $100. Separate youth, teenage, and adult divisions. You play against teams your own age and height. To play, call now. Or get an entry form at Super Fresh, Blockbuster Video, Minus Muffler, or at the Courier Post in New Jersey. Prison subscribers, you get a $5 discount. Hoop It Up, brought to you by Coach Sports State, WDRE, your Tri-State Toyota dealers, and Prism. The place is the odd in Buffalo as Ross Cowie takes the North American Cup around the field. They didn't even wait for the presentation. They grabbed it. They took that trophy right off the table and from Chris Fritz and Russ Klein and just said, let's go, baby. Our fans want to celebrate. Let's go down to the field. John Tavares has been named the Coors Light MVP of this one. Well, I tell you, they could have named a couple of guys. Tavares is certainly deserving. Let's go down to the field to Bill Barroza. Bill? Present the North American Cup to the Bandits General Manager Johnny Marini and head coach Lars Bartley and Bandits captains Jim Bellman, Derek Keenan, and Bob Hamley. And this makes it official. Is that a happy picture, Lee? You look at, you know, these players, uh, the price they pay to get to this situation. Keenan, hurt in the face, hurt leg. Hamley played a sensational game. Feltman was his great defensive self. And Bill Barroza, a lot of guys could have been the course late MVP, but Bill Barroza has the one that got the award, the ever all pro, the tremendous John Tavares. I've got John Tavares with me, the MVP of the championship game tonight. Four goals, three assists. John, how does it feel? It feels great. We couldn't have done it in a better way here at home. As you can see, the fans are loud and great. We, we, we owe it to them. They got us right back in the game. We're down by a goal. It couldn't have happened any better. I'll tell you, two years in a row, a close game. Your hamstring bothering you. Does it bother you now? Yeah, it's fatigue, I must admit. But like I said before the game, I was going to play on adrenaline, and when I had to, I did. You got anything to say to the Buffalo fans? Thank you, and I hope they keep supporting us for a long time. We'll be back next year. Right, congratulations. Good luck, and enjoy the evening. John Tavares has given these people a reason to shout. What a story for him, Kevin Alexander. 13 
12, the Bandits are the champions.